where this is already fascinating. Our next guest shot to fame after his iconic interview made him an overnight sensation. Sensation, yes. Since his viral video, Rory McSorley has travelled to America to become an auctioneer and is now back home to try his hand at politics. But before we of chat course. to the man himself, let's take a look at that famous clip. It was a wintry walk to school in Park Village, but they're a hardy breed in these parts. Well, the demolish says we had to go anyway. We hadn't much a choice in the matter, but sure. It's a I'd cold, have... it's a cold journey to school this morning. Oh, good, you wouldn't belong getting frost, but. There he is. There he is. Frosted we all know boy us. himself, Roy McSorley. Good morning to you. Yeah, good morning oh. to you. Hey, that was Tommy 2015. Yes. What, what age were you then? 18. 18. Unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable at, at a young age to, I know. to go viral across the world. Just unexpected too. Uh, uh, well, it was. I mean, unexpected mm -hmm. as well. Like, even to the extent that people have got... Somebody got a tattoo of your face Two people got leg. tattoos, actually. So somebody got a coloured one on the calf of their foot and then somebody else got one on their back. It was just like this, like, outline. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable, isn't it? I didn't, OK, right, when you're 18 and it's a bit of crack, mm -hmm. and then stuff like this starts happening... Well, and, that, that's there. <laughs> and you just... Like, you were basically using phraseology that you use. Like, I've heard you before on podcasts, Aye. and it's you just have a great turn of phrase. <laughs> that's all it was. Was it just mad overwhelming? It was, all right. Oh, no, I mean, it, it, it was a strange sort of position, cos I knew, like, there was no going back because... No, my voice is just like a DNA test. Anywhere you went across the country, everybody knew who you were. So, you know, it, it was a wee bit... It was sort of difficult in one way to pull that together in such a way that, you know, you were going to, like, build any long-term type of career out of that, that type of way, because it just happened unexpectedly that way. But at the same time, it's sort of difficult then just to go back and live an ordinary life there. So you're, that was a str it was a strange kind of scenario you were in. This it's was a tricky one, particularly at the age of 18 as well, having this success success from mm -hmm. uh, from this viral sensation mm -hmm. thing. Like, it must be really difficult for anybody to be put into that situation. Now, you did some, like, good out of it as well. Oh, like we you, did, Like, right. you released a oh, single, oh, so. like a charity single, actually knocked B. Taylor Swift mm -hmm. at, at, in the charts That's at the right. time. <laughs> well, we might get another song out in not too long a time as well. Right, who was... Did you have anybody advising no, you? No, I, I, just... I, I had... I sort of decided to take a step away from that. I just was right, no, do you know what? It, you would be better just... It, you need to just envision with precision and then pursue with conviction then. We just needed to, you know, have a more detailed plan of exactly where you wanted to go before we just sort of pulled the trigger on it then. Envision so. with precision. I love it. This is you here in the video That's right. that you oh, released, that you, you beat Taylor that? Swift in the country music charts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this was it. It's the girl for me. Mm -hmm. So at the time, you were kind of enjoying it. OK, the, the crack, crack was good, all right. Yeah. But that, that was just kind of where it was at. Do you know what I mean? So but then... We're, ju we're, we're just two weeks into the resurrection here now. You're two weeks into the resurrection That's of right. Rory McSorley back on the road. We've just been going on tour around all of these comedy podcasts. This is right. We'll just start comedy just and then go general, then go political then. Well, but hold on now. So let's go back. What have you been doing in the meantime? You ended up becoming an auctioneer on a cruise ship. What uh, is that? I had... Well, it's like... Uh, I had wanted to go to America and become like this real unique Irish auctioneer. And I had went to auction school and done like a real estate course out there. So that was the plan to forge this niche, uh, you know, as kind of doing yeah. that. I thought, right, it's a great balance for me. It's like this sort of mix of entertainment and business, that type of way. It just sort of seemed to suit me well that way. So we done a course out there. So on the bottom on five, bottom on five, let me get a bottom on five, on the five, on the five, on the one thousand five hundred on the market, let me get a bottom on fifteen hundred. You know, how, how to do all of that? And then you'd be, we, you'd be you would know then, how much you money you sold. sold. And then, yeah. But then instead of just going to the mainland in America, then I just I went on a cruise ship. Then I just sort of wanted to make a fresh start after all of that. Okay. Fresh but and everything then. Okay. So well, that's it, that. because I suppose you have the whole Frostbite boy, uh -huh. you've done the, 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 the music mm -hmm. video, yeah. done all, but at the same time, you're thinking long-term, yeah. where am I going with this? And, yeah. you, like, your voice is so distinctive. <laughs> no. So auctioneering would have been a, well, a, a brilliant path. Well, we have a new manager inside now, so the auctions would still be a good option for me going forward. We're thinking yeah. and doing that now, like big live auctions and things like that. But we will okay. more about that in the next few weeks. But then you were looking for the green card for America <laughs> and you met... Uh, 
Was it a 75-year-old <laughs> woman the, from Texas? That was, all uh, right. And you were going to get married? That was the plan. I was going to bring her back home to get married. Everybody's seen me and, me and them podcasts and then all my friends and neighbours are sitting watching that and then they're like, oh, how does she think that stuff up? And then they're like, we, we, we were asked to the wedding. <laughs> so was she, did she love the video? Uh, no, she... Had <laughs> she seen it? She's seen it, all right. Her? Just through a friend of a friend. And that, well, they just well, that was one of the only options just to get out there was going and <laughs> getting married and that. So I says, right, right, look, you know what? It has to be done. That's what we'll do. But then, oh, then sure, died and made the finish up then. So that's <laughs> oh, she did. <laughs> she I'm passed sorry. away. Did oh, she? Oh. That's such, but whatever. Well, anyway, did wasn't, she know? Wasn't to be. Wasn't did she to know be. it was for the green card? Okay, there was a bilateral going on there. You know what I mean? The bilateral agreement. <laughs> you know yourself. <laughs> Before gotcha. we get into I gotcha. politics, mm-hmm. uh, I think you moved back home. Then obviously COVID hit oh, and you had to move back. I think you moved. I was living in Kerry then. That's right. In a in a camper van, it was, was it? I. Yeah. Because there was nowhere else to rent. There was nowhere to rent at all. That, no, but see, no, north or south, anywhere at all, I just, you know, mm. couldn't find anywhere at all. Because I, I remember you made the papers again, it's kind of, where is he now, yeah. Frostbite Boy? That's right. You made front of the papers because mm-hmm. you got rescued. That, it, 14 now, hours it, I was on. Well, so tell us, what happened now that uh, the air sea rescue had to come and get you? You were rescued at sea. I was on for 14 hours just in the water off the coast of Kerry then. I just swam over to this lighthouse and then they just, it, there was a, all these, somebody had found me clothes that was lying on the beach then and then they just seen all of the, there was all these helicopters and everything was sent out after me then. Were you actually in trouble though or were you just out for a swim? Well, I, I don't believe, like, like in my mind I wasn't like, right, I'm dying or whatever else, but at, at the same time, no, I was on the water for 14 hours then. And then so you're, in, you're swimming, treading mm-hmm. water for 14 hours? I was, there was a half hour break for you know, whenever I was at the lighthouse. Oh, so you stopped for a break? Mm-hmm. No, no, but I swam over to the lighthouse and then this was me swimming back you're home swimming again. Back. then. Okay. Uh-huh. So there was the headlines of you having had hypothermia. Yeah. Did you? Well, I think I did all right. You did? Uh, yeah. Because I remember it seeing you in the paper there that that was going on. You, you were all right? Oh, I was grand. No, just a day or two in the hospital and I was out and I was grand. Okay. Oh, my oh, God. God. Just train for the heavyweight and then enter the featherweight. Many's the one mid millions. Many's the one ran countries. But no, I've never well, heard of listen, anybody do a thing like that. Speaking of a man running a country, mm-hmm. there, uh, you have a new book called The Reign of King Rory. Yes. Um, so this is in the book, you're kind of discussing your own political ambitions. Yes. Well, basically what I've done is I've laid out like an idealistic template. There it is there. How Ireland would effectively function better under me. I've went through every heading of the constitution between... Uh, no national government, local government, and went through all the present issues, things like the cost of love and immigration, and basically laid out like an ideal template for, do you know, what would effect- actually be better. I mean, they're having these huge conventions all over the country about how a new United State of all of Ireland would actually look, but I mean, there's nobody that's even contributing a single idea to how it would actually work. Because you're from Derry, but living yeah. in Donegal, so mm-hmm. you're kind of both sides of it. OK, well, I mean, my whole thing would be... a. The, and the hope and expectation that all of Ireland would be united. So it's just basically, mm-hmm. but if you don't have like a proper vision f- to actually orient the country towards, do you know, fighting against what you don't want is only ever going to take you so far. But if you have like a real vision of, the, no, because the opportunity to redo a constitution is very rare and unique in any country. So the fact that if we were able to have the right vision and the right plan, to make that happen. But what is it? So then for a 32 county Ireland, yes. this is your vision. Yes. What is it? How does it unite? How does it work? Where does it function from? Where is the doll or storm under the parliament? Like, oh, Well, oh, right. I think we would have obviously just have one government, which would be the doll. But then the thing about the, the thing about Stormont, then I would, um, what we would, ha- we would, we would have to do is take the cultural side out of government politics. Okay. So what I would like to do on that side, I presume that's what you're talking about, yeah, just yeah, the yeah. cultural... Yeah, like what do you do? Yeah. Yeah, so what I, what I would like to do there on the cultural el- element is sort of um, ease any tensions there and make sure that, you know, the, the whole country is not just... No, it's, it's it, a peaceful transition would be to have the President of Ireland combined with Minister of Arts, Culture and the Gaeltacht in the South, as well as partial amalgamation with Minister of Culture in the North. So that the... President of Ireland would be directly elected as the primary cultural director of the Irish culture to strengthen it and, you know, make a good Irish language, Irish music, all the rest of it yeah. then. And then we would create a new president of unionism. 
where you would have this new role and you would get the royal family in Britain involved, you would get them to give legitimacy to the role. Everybody that has like a British passport would get a vote for it. And then you would be able to take the cultural side out and then put on serious people and optimise the candidacy of the politicians to run the government. And would you become King Rory though? Yes, right. <laughs> what I'm saying about that, right, is that we, it would be a departure from the parliamentary model, which I believe to be chaotic and out of date. And what I'm saying is there would be a direct vote for the election of Taoiseach. And it, the job description would evolve from that of a prime minister to an elected monarch. Well, listen. But everybody in Ireland would get one But vote. that one person rules everything then. They uh, rule like the budget. Uh, they do yeah. transport. They do no, no, the, justice. They would coordinate all of that. But you see, what you would have to do under my process for appointment is you would have to say, right, this is my minister of finance. This is my minister of transport. This is my minister what? of agriculture. I I know you have a podcast coming out very yep. shortly as well, and no doubt we're going to be hearing a lot about sport. this. Uh, that's it, absolutely. Get, get elected. Possibly. Um, listen, you say, your, so book, the... your book, The Reign of King Rory, yes. is out. It's available now. No, uh, no, it's not, is... not just yet. I recorded the audiobook the day before oh, yesterday. Okay. It should be out by the end of the week. Just Amazon self-publish it. There you go. <laughs> Rory McSorley, thank you so much for joining great us. Great to be here. Thank you Love very much, Martin. <laughs> Can you give us a frostbit? Is that, is that gone? Oh, God, you won't be long getting frostbit. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Here I go, Joe. Rory, thank you. Top man. Thanks for that. so much. <laughs>